This program is made possible in part by a grant from the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism and by viewers like you. One hundred million years ago, erupting volcanoes brought prized jewels to the Earth's surface. Pure carbon, crystallized by tremendous heat and pressure. Many were carried to the sea by streams and rivers. Others remained embedded deep in the throat of dead volcanoes. Few places on Earth hold the geologic formula to produce these stones. Among them, Africa, Australia, and Arkansas. I don't think it is, but there's no reason in not keeping it. Right? Right, you cut my sack. Okay, let's get your sack out. We can take it up and let them check it anyway. Be a souvenir. The crater of Diamond State Park in southwest Arkansas is unlike any place on the face of the earth. The occurrence of diamonds is unusual in and of itself, but the fact that the general public can visit this unique park, search for diamonds, and keep what they find is unprecedented throughout the world. One thing that we have been told more from outsiders than insiders <laughs> is that, look, there are a lot of states that have mountains. There are a lot of states that have streams. There are a lot of states that have racetracks. There are a lot of states that have a lot of the same things Arkansas has. But guess what, guys? You're the only one that has a diamond map. Oh, it's very exciting. This is my second trip out in the last five years from Florida, and um, I thoroughly enjoy it. The, the aspect of finding a diamond is thrilling. We're out here trying to get rich. I come mostly for relaxation because it's so, I don't know, it's kind of soothing here. I feel comfortable here. The excitement of finding something that you're not sure if you're going to find it or not, but you hope you do. And, when other people find some, that really makes you want to get out here and dig some more. Naturally, I would like to find a large diamond or even a small one. <laughs> and we're going to set these down in the water. If people oh, are a little other. bit like me, that from time to time they said, what can we do that's different? You know, what would be fun and different in some place we haven't seen? I would say if you live in Arkansas and you haven't been to the Crater of Diamonds at least once, it's a place you ought to see. It's an unusual place. It's just as unusual as, as Yellowstone National Park in its own way, maybe more so. And it's the kind of place that uh, you just, you ought to be there once, at least. And a lot of people have liked it enough, they certainly come back. It's an unusual feeling to walk across the field and just be kicking along and to be going through your mind, well, what would I do if I found a diamond? It's an unusual feeling and, and honestly, you know, we have a lot of people brag about, you know, their park might be the oldest or their park might be the largest, but I always brag because I think our park is the most unusual, definitely in the state, and, uh, and it's the only place in the whole world where you can dig for diamonds and keep whatever you find. If you don't find garnets, you ain't gonna find many diamonds. I can tell you that for sure. I don't know why. I don't care what you're digging. If you don't find no garnets, you can go get your diamonds. Be there, Rock. James Archer isn't your average tourist. He's a hardcore regular and sort of an unofficial ambassador for the crater. You can make it hard. It's easy if you know how to do it, though. It don't bother me. I get out and watch 20 or 30 bucks and then quit. That's, a, that's enough. I ain't trying to make no living out here. This is something passing time. If I find a diamond, it's all right. If I don't, it's all right. I'm just out here. That's the main thing. It's like being where I'm, where it's quiet at. One of these days, I'm expecting to get that bigger. 
Mr. Archer can be found here just about any time. In 18 years, he's found thousands of diamonds, ranging from specks to four and a quarter carats. He's willing to share his knowledge and experience with newcomers. I follow him around forever, uh, trying to figure out how to hunt diamonds. You know, I read about him in the paper and all this all the time. And uh, about my fourth diamond, it dawned on me how to, how to find diamonds. I went and told James, I said, I figured it out, how you find diamonds. He says, how's that, boy? I said, you work your butt off. He said, you got it, you're gonna find them now. <laughs> the first one I found was a, a four point, it looked like a heart, a little yellow heart. I thought it was a piece of mica. I went screaming through the house, oh, I got one, I got one, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I was thrilled to death. I lost it in the backyard. <laughs> Lost two diamonds so far. James lost more diamonds than I've ever found. Let me throw out one. I don't know. Let me flip it one, be laying up there, and you can see what it looked like. It might. There's a possibility it could be well alone in it. If it keep that kind of stuff, it will. But if it changed, then it could be in it. Could not be nothing in it. <laughs> the regulars bring an assortment of screens, shovels, and buckets. They come early and stay late. The McMahons of Austin, Texas, have settled in for a few months. Well, we came here about two years ago, and um, as a follow-up to visiting hot springs and working the crystal mines up there, I thought, well, diamonds would be even better. So we came up here for a visit, and uh, we found a 0.87 uh, white diamond up on Beatty's Hill, and it seemed pretty easy. <laughs> a couple of shovels full of dirt, and we're going to be here for about five or six months. So we moved up here temporarily. We may find a place um, to live, and we may decide to settle in here, uh, which would be great too. But right now, we're just looking for diamonds and enjoying it. But it's a beautiful park. And um, Arkansas is a beautiful state. I think pe more people should know about it. We've seen people get uh, dryer drums and mount them in a, some type of a structure where they can be turned uh, by hand. Uh, I saw a fella with uh, dowsing rods, uh, magnifiers, taped onto sticks as they walk along, look on top of the ground. Um, another individual had uh, two probes uh, that ran off of a battery or something, and I believe he was trying to zero in on the electronic charge of the diamonds. So one of the fascinating things about the job is seeing these visitors come in with all these different ideas and, and uh, hopefully productive means of, of finding diamonds, uh, and you never know how it turns out really and truly because lots of times they want to keep it quiet. I be thinking about the people, you know, that come out here. They come out here and stay a couple of hours and they've never been here. Well, I give up hope. I won't find that. I said, bro, every time I come out here, and I've been coming out here about 18 years, and every time I raise this box, I'll be looking for a big diamond in it. I ain't been coming every day, but I come waking up and every time I raise this box up, I'll be looking to see it in this box right here when I rake in it. That's what I'll be raking for, to see what's in it. Looking for that building that pop up. But I've always been fortunate to dig the hole and the other guy get the diamond out of it. I had that to happen several times. I dig the hole and the guy get the big diamond, I get the, let's get the little one. Did that, Rock. It's the early 1900s, Murfreesboro, Arkansas. Sunday afternoons are reserved for visiting and relaxation. Not much going on in this small town at the foot of the Washita Mountains. John Wesley Huddleston was like a lot of people in the community, trying to scratch out a living on 160 acres. But an August day in 1906 changed his life and brought worldwide attention to Pike County, Arkansas. Huddleston discovered diamonds on his failing farm. 
I think Mr. Huddleston was probably what we would describe as a character. Mr. Huddleston did not care for farming as most of the residents of that area did. They logged or farmed for a living. But he had the nature of a prospector. So he preferred to wander the woods. And at the time he looked, he found the diamond, I think he was looking for gold because there is fool's gold in that area and he had seen it. So he felt like he would find riches some way. Once his find was certified as genuine, it didn't take Huddleston long before he sold out, hoping to live the remainder of his life in luxury. Mr. Huddleston was a backwoods type of a person, and when he was paid $36,000 for his home place, he thought he had enough money to do him the rest of his life in style and he spent it accordingly. But uh, of course, it didn't last long enough to see him to his death. Huddleston, his wife and daughters were barely existing at the time of the discovery. But when he struck it rich, he promised suitors a $1,000 dowry for each of his five daughters. The fortune ran out before the youngest married. Mr. Huddleston, lived in the community for a number of years, unable to work, but without any living. And the community saw that he had a place to live and food to eat. Mining companies went to work retrieving the buried treasure. There were many ventures from the early 1900s through the 1940s, mismanaged and unsuccessful. Legal complications and joint ownerships contributed to an endless stream of lawsuits. Most mining companies were either financially unstable or lacked expertise. In 1913, geologist Austin Millar took over the defunct Ozark Diamond Mining Company. By the following year, his efforts were beginning to pay off. Through the latter part of the decade, Millar's production was exceptional, but his dreams turned to ashes in January 1919. They found lots of diamonds, they were doing very well. Unfortunately, they had some enemies in the community. There was problems over land ownership and leasing, you know, all this kind of legal mumbo jumbo going on. And the story goes that one night, the night watchman who stayed in this building right over here was lured from his post by a woman of ill repute. And the whole, that same night, the whole building burned to the ground. Five previous fires and lack of insurance collapsed Millar's enterprise. During World War II, Arkansas Governor Homer Atkins tried to persuade President Franklin Roosevelt to fund a mining operation here. Fearing competition from the Murfreesboro Reserve, speculation is Winston Churchill interceded on behalf of the De Beers Diamond Syndicate. He convinced the U.S. government to back off. Even Henry Ford offered Millar more than $1 million for his share of the mine. Ford wanted it all or nothing, but he could never come to terms with other landowners. In 1969, the 73-acre crater and some adjoining land of 815 acres was sold to a Texas corporation. With the help of park revenue bonds issued in the early 70s, the state of Arkansas purchased the entire 888-acre tract for $750,000. Although records are sketchy, estimates at early mining attempts put the diamond take at 70,000. Under state ownership, 17,000 stones have been sifted by hand on Beatty's Hill and in the shadows of Broken Hope. 
Commercial mining companies have long had an interest in the crater of diamonds. Four outside interests put up the money to fund state testing at the park. Test drilling in 1992 consisted of 26 holes at various angles to depths of up to 600 feet. This graphic indicates the size of the field. The green enclosure indicates the search area for visitors. The blue section contains the diamonds. Core samples taken indicate the reserve is of considerable size, more than 100 surface acres. This deposit uh, rates probably between 8th and 10th in the world as far as size of, of the deposit is concerned. It is, of course, cone-shaped, and uh, there is a total volume of uh, 104 million tons, but of that, only 78 million tons is considered to be ore. It, uh, it only goes down, as far as we know at this point, to 600 feet. Well, it compares uh, very favorably with the deposits in Australia, and uh, not so much as a matter of size, but in a matter of character of the rock that's in the deposit. At least 1,000 carats are needed to study the grade of the reserve and the value of the diamonds. To achieve that sampling, up to 11,000 tons of ore may be excavated. This phase of testing has received approval from the Arkansas State Parks Recreation and Travel Commission. If we go in and mine in that park, we'll be the first <laughs> in the country to ever take a state park and use it for commercial purposes. That's a first I don't believe we want to have. Environmental groups are up in arms over the possibility that commercial mining might one day take place at the crater. They say each phase of testing will be met with court action and demonstrations. The park side of me said we shouldn't even be considering it. And, you know, and I've lived with this process since 1973. The other side of me says, you know, what are you afraid of to find out at least what you have so you know what you're dealing with? There are passionate differences among the citizens of Arkansas and the residents of Murfreesboro. Mining company executives say a portion of the field could be set aside for tourists. When results of all tests are in, a tough public policy question may have to be answered. Because federal money was used to develop the park, the state does not have the final say on the mining question. A provision in the funding agreement stipulates the land must remain for outdoor recreation. However, there is a codicil which permits conversion, the approval of the Secretary of Interior, and substitution of equal valued land. And then the mud is going to go down through, we're going to be left with the fine gravel. And that's what we're after, is that fine gravel. And that's where the diamond is most likely going to be. Diamonds were first discovered in India around 800 BC, originally prized for their hardness. They were worn as symbols of strength and courage. Subtle gradations of color, cut, clarity, and size determine value. On the color of a diamond, the more colorless it is, generally the more desirable the stone would be. There are fancy colors, such as the canary diamonds, which are a brassy yellow tone. Uh, even more rare would be something in a pink stone, blue, or even green. Uh, generally, if a diamond is supposed to be white in color, tends to be a bit dingy or yellow, it's much less valuable diamond. The largest diamond found at the crater is the 40.23 carat Uncle Sam. It was cut to 12 and a half carats and is valued at over $600,000. It was sold to a private collector in the early 70s. The majority of rough diamonds do not turn out to be a carat, and so generally there's a psychological jump in price from one carat above because a carat would be considered pretty rare from a rough stone. Crater diamonds are reported to be harder than African stones, and value-wise stack up favorably to diamonds found in other parts of the world. More than 600 diamonds are found at the park each year. A ring featuring a rough, uncut yellow diamond is bringing new attention to the crater. At four and a quarter carats, the canary diamond was found in 1978 and purchased by gemologist Stan Kahn of Pine Bluff. The mounting for the intense yellow stone depicts elements of the natural state. First Lady Hillary Clinton wore the Con Canary to several inaugural events, bringing more attention to Arkansas and the park. During the campaign, we 
wrote to Bill Clinton and asked Bill if he would like to uh, use the diamond again for this inauguration. And we promptly got a, a letter back from him saying, uh, thanks a lot, but first things first, let us get, a, let us get elected. We wanted something that was beautiful, that, that, uh, that the state could be proud of, we can be proud of. We're getting calls from all over, all over the world, frankly, wanting to exhibit it. Stores from coast to coast are screaming for it. Please let us have it for just a few days. The crater of Diamond State Park is located among the pine forest of southwest Arkansas. The park features a modern campground with water and electricity. The 1.3 mile scenic river trail takes hikers on a gentle nature walk to the banks of the Little Missouri River. Here anglers can try their luck at trout and smallmouth bass. This is exciting, isn't it? I've lived in Arkansas all my life, and I didn't know they had all this over here. A lot of the limestones in the world were laid down during this time. The, one down the Contemporary Visitor Center features a museum with exhibits outlining the geologic history of diamonds and the storied past of old mining pursuits. When guests want a break from diamond hunting, they'll find plenty of things to do within an hour's drive of Murfreesboro. Daisy State Park sits on the clear waters and beautiful mountain scenery of Lake Greeson. 7,000 acres of water for boaters and anglers. De Grey Resort State Park has it all. Fishing, water skiing, tennis, and an 18-hole championship golf course or step back in time to a memorable Arkansas community, Old Washington State Park, at one time the Confederate capital of Arkansas and home to the legendary Bowie Knife. But the central gemstone in the crown of the natural state's park system is the crater of Diamond State Park. Visitors come from around the world expecting just possibly to unearth a diamond. It's just as exciting today as it must have been when John Huddleston plucked that first diamond from the mud ruts of his barren field in 1906. One of the comments you hear a lot is that, well, we wouldn't know a diamond if we found one, but 99.9% .9 of the people, if they find a diamond, they know it, and they're excited. They, they're coming up with it in a little bottle or between their fingers, and it, and it is a lot of excitement, and we try and do everything that we can to, to create excitement and, and to make it a very unique opportunity for them. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God, that's nearly half carried in. Where were you, Jack? <laughs> He's going to go back and find a safe spot. Yeah. Fifty-three points. Is that how much you guessed? Just a little over half carrot, huh? Mm -hmm. Hi there. Well, he, you can tell it's one. I thought you wouldn't know what it looked like, but you do, don't you? Mm -hmm. They really want to know, you know, all about it, you know, how, how it was formed, how it got there, and, and, you know, of course what it's worth and all that type of thing, but I think the, the majority of people who find a diamond here are just so excited that they found it, it's theirs, and it's very special. The one overriding thing that, uh, that I think we all look for is experience. Um, we, we can go to a jewelry store and buy a diamond or topaz or amethyst or whatever we have, m maybe perhaps have an interest in. However, experience of the actual thing, some kind of communication with, with nature or such to where we can actually come and see where this thing lives and perhaps understand more about it. Uh, and to find a diamond yourself is different than being given one or purchasing one. It's the experience. It's the one-on-one. -on -one. It's the, I did it myself. Oh, and it blew. As I found a little bead of one. Out of all that stuff, finally found a little bead. <laughs> See right there, right there. Right there, you can see it in there, can't you? Hope you find one. Get myself a big old golf ball size one. The Crater of Diamonds State Park provides visitors with the unique experience of repeating history 
are making history. No other park in Arkansas transports people on the brink of the 21st century to the efforts of their ancestors. Miners and speculators, oblivious to the technologies of the future, but keenly aware of the beauty and bounty of the diamond. This program is made possible in part by a grant from the Arkansas Department of Parks and Tourism and by viewers like you. For more information on travel in the natural state, dial 1-800-NATURAL.